Now let's consider linear regression. The goal of linear regression is to find the points that minimize the sum of the squared vertical distances between the observed data points and the fitted line. This is exactly like we were doing through for regression to the origin. The only difference is now we're allowing the intercept to be non-zero. Let's let beta naught denote the intercept and beta one denote the slope. The distances between the observed points and the lines are called the residuals. And the points, the fitted values on the lines, where those line, where the points hit that line are called the fitted values. Let's call those y hat values. So let's continue to let y be our response vector, an n-dimensional response vector. Let's let x be our n-dimensional regression vector where they're lined up. y1 corresponds to x1, y2 corresponds to x2, and so on. So we could make a scatter plot. And then we want to find the best line, beta naught hat plus beta 1 x, beta 1 hat x. In other words, we want the line that minimizes the sum of the squared vertical distances, which is nothing other than the squared Euclidean norm between the y, the observed y values, and the fitted y values. Or in other words, the squared Euclidean norm between uh, of y minus quantity beta naught hat times jn plus beta 1 hat times x. So let's solve for beta naught hat and beta 1 hat. Let's drop the hat notations because when we think of it as a function, it's preferable to talk about the, gen the general variables. And then when we actually get the specific estimates, we put the hat over them. So we want to minimize the function norm y minus beta naught jn minus beta 1 x quantity squared. Notice, if beta 1 were known, we could just subtract beta 1 x from y, and we have a new vector, and we're back to the mean only regression problem again, and we know the solution to that. So we know that the beta naught that would solve that would just be 1 over n times our new outcome vector y minus beta 1 x transpose times jn, or in other words, the average of those values. This yields the equation beta naught equals y bar minus beta 1 x bar. So whatever the solution for beta naught and beta 1 are for, to the least squares criteria, they have to go through this point, beta naught equal y bar minus beta 1 x bar. Or in other words, what we're saying is that y bar must equal beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat x bar once we get our solutions. This is exactly saying that the solution has to go through the point y bar x bar because when we plug in x bar as a predictor we get y bar out as an outcome which is an interesting fact. In other words the regression line always has to go through the mean of the y's and the mean of the x's. Now let's go back to our equation. Because we know that's true let's plug this value of beta naught into the least squares criteria. So we know that our least squares criteria has to be greater than or equal to if when we plug in beta naught equal to this, y bar minus beta 1 x bar. So we plug that in and expand it out. Then notice we can rewrite it as y minus y bar times jn minus x minus x bar times jn, which is exactly times beta 1, which is exactly regression through the origin with the center data, right? y minus y bar times jn is exactly centering the y vector and x minus x bar times jn is exactly centering the x vector. So now we know what the solution has to be. It has to be the inner product between the centered y vector and the centered x vector divided by the inner product of the centered x vector by itself now. Well, what does this work out to be? We can work through it a little bit and, and it basically just comes out to be exactly the covariance between y and x divided by the variance of x. Or in other words, that it's the correlation between y and x div times the standard deviation of y divided by the standard deviation of x. This is exactly the estimate we came up with in our regression through the mean, I'm sorry, regression to the origin lecture. But now we see that this is the solution when we do 
full regression, full linear regression. It's also interesting to note that we get the same solution if we were to center our data and do regression through the origin as if we were to leave our data uncentered and do ordinary regression.